From a Christian perspective, the obvious answer would be no, for a very big reason. The Quran contradicts the New Testament, which was written by Jesus' closest followers. All right. So to put in context, this comment uh, by Sylvia Arienti um, is from the video titled "Should We Learn? Should You Learn About Jesus from the Bible or from the Quran?" Which is my uh, earlier video where I commented based on a comment on my video and comparing how, whether we should trust the Quran or the Bible with regard to understanding what really is you know the story of Jesus etc right and that original comment uh, mentioned about when the two is written and i highlighted the fact that the claim of the two books meaning not the claim of Jesus but what it is is very different one you can see as historical documents one is a revelation from god so regardless of when god reveals something it is true of course the big question here is how do you know what is the revelation of god there, there must be proof etc etc right but i'm just saying just saying one is later doesn't mean it is wrong because if it's truly from god why is it wrong just because it's later right so so that's basically my comment and of course he here give his point of view that says okay he doesn't don't um, agree with that because the quran contradicts the new testament which is okay so the the basis of this i would assume is because he already put his belief on new testament first and foremost right because if you believe in new testament and then suddenly quran comes with a different story different claim then it will be wrong just like a muslim believe in the quran so something so suddenly the bible says something or torah says something or veda says something regardless of earlier or later but this is the truth so that different must be false right so it's similar from that perspective right so of course the discussion between me and him is how we do we prove how he prove new testament is valid how i prove quran is valid right so that essentially it before going further i think that's essentially it but let's go further This is true even from secular point of view. The New Testament was written in the first century when Jesus lived. Okay, that is interesting because I think many would argue against this point. From from what I I'm not a scholar in this topic, I'm not a researcher in this topic, but I've seen enough debates, discussion etc. So what I come again and again come across is this statement, this kind of statement from my perspective looking at it have been refuted many times but of course if we want to really scrutinize this i i have to dig in deeper but from what i have heard and seen uh, it seems that the consensus or you know people that that study this thing says it is not written during the time of jesus while the quran was written much later okay um uh, again what is written when doesn't necessarily unless you want to say that it is being authored by so that's different right because when we say uh, a, a, a a newspaper writing something if it's written tomorrow or next week doesn't necessarily mean if it's different right a newspaper something happened today or tonight tomorrow a newspaper article come up next week another article the next month another article about the same thing Just because one is earlier one's later doesn't mean the later one is less accurate. You have to see what sources are you taking from, right? So so that's that's the scrutiny um and and how to say demand of proof etc, right? Because if this guy the earliest one that chase the deadline and want to be the earliest that uh, publish the story, if his source can be questioned regardless of even he's the one writing it and publish it first, if the source cannot be trusted then then it it cannot be trusted but if the last one you know the source is credible etc etc so we have to see the source where does it come from reliable or not etc right so that's from my perspective that is it is not when it is being written 
because we are talking about written writing something based on um, events based on what happened right it's not like uh, i'm authoring something okay because of this even atheist scholar use new testament to learn about jesus uh okay we do not learn the quran to learn about jesus we want to to get guidance right? and part of guidance is stories of the past including moses including adam etc including jesus right? so i'm not sure whether you would use this statement does okay does atheist agree with the story of adam in the bible does the atheist agree about the story of moses in the bible does the atheist agree about story of what was the earlier story noah from the bible when was the story about noah written and whether the atheist would accept it as reliable or not right so my my question is that because we are not talking about just story of jesus but the whole thing you can see new testament is close to jesus you can see the torah is close to moses but what about noah what about adam so are you saying that what is in the bible is only accurate about moses and jesus but not so much about adam noah etc because it's so far right or, or what right from the quran perspective it doesn't claim to be someone who is observing is writing it down god is revealing to the prophet just like moses when god revealed what about adam about noah etc moses does not need to know noah in person doesn't need to know anyone who observe something from noah but god the one that knows everything from the end from the beginning until the end is telling moses for example this is what happened back then it must be the, tr- the truth jesus when god revealed to him about Adam, about Noah, about whatever, much, much earlier. It is the truth because from God, similarly, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam receives revelation about Noah, about Adam, about Moses, about Abraham, about um, uh, Jesus, it's the truth because it's from the reliable source. Right? So that's basically my essential point. I do not think the argument is correct. I know Quran claim about itself is different from the Bible. Yes, of course. I do not trust the Quran because I do not believe this claim. Obviously, if I believe, I would also believe what it says about Jesus. Yeah, of course. Uh, it makes sense, right? Just like I understand his statement about if someone believe in New Testament, obviously they will believe what the New Testament says about Jesus. Uh, just like if I believe in the Quran, obviously I would agree what Uh, believe in what the Quran says about Jesus about everything right so unless one is already convinced the Quran is from Allah there's no independent reason to trust it yeah similarly with the Bible actually right if you don't trust its its sources <laughs> of course I, I, I going back to here right when we talk about history in general I, I, I don't have any problem for anyone who to trust something that the reliability may, reliability may be like okay 50% 60% but because otherwise we don't know anything and it's not about faith it's not about salvation it's just we have a picture of what happened back then right so fine if you want uh, any any history like that but when we talk about believing jesus is god you you cannot base on historical document like that which is percentage of con- of 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 proof of evidence of it's 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 never 80% 90% right anyway i completely disagree about the hadith being more reliable than the bible the asanid are actually evidence for the contrary interesting perspective they exist precisely because they were written down so much after the time of muhammad died while the Test- new testament was written within the same generation of jesus by the people that know him so i never needed them again um my analogy about the newspaper that is written tomorrow next week next month right i think regardless of the time i would still want to know is is it really a reliable source um especially we are, we are talking about salvation about uh, heaven and hell etc right we are not talking about just 
um, a story that we can accept to be okay. Let's let's believe that story. Let's believe that uh, the dinosaur is like this, because that that's that depiction of dinosaur keep changing, right? Because n- new found evidence says, oh, perhaps the ship is more like this. Oh, perhaps it's bigger than initially thought. Oh, perhaps because we we found new evidence and it we redraw the imagination of the past. But we still get to this. We that's dangerous to do, right? Because because it's assumption at best, even though it's like educated guess, but still a guess. Anyway, um, about the 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 sanad. It is not because because the 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 culture of knowing where you get it from. It it is 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 from the beginning, meaning that. You want to know this is the truth. Of course, when uh, the hadith being written down, of course it's being document documented as such, right? But the 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 philosophy behind it, it's not just suddenly come into existence there, right? When when people, uh, how to say? Say oh, Prophet Muhammad said it. Really? Where who who do you get it from? Oh, I got from uh, Abu Bakar and oh, oh, okay, okay, must be true because y- you got from trustworthy source, etc. Right? So th- those those are common. Uh, of course, when the hadith being written for the benefit of the world afterwards, then all of those being written properly, right? So it's not like no one knows where ca- um, any any words come from, and anyone can just claim, oh, no, Prophet Muhammad says this, and then later wait, wait. Let's trace who we get it from, right? It's not. It's not like that. The one who is tracing is the one that is documenting it. But those who share and really, they know where it come from. Because even in the Quran, when you say the the sanad is not just hadith, right? Meaning that uh, the recitation of the Quran have sanad as well. So the the concept of sanad in Islam is not just something that come into existence much later, right? Meaning when you say, um, okay. I'm I'm I want to khatam Quran with you, with this association. Please check me, etc. So he have learned from someone from the beginning until the end of the Quran. So his teacher is this, his teacher, and it it reach Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So that that is a sanad as well. So that concept is embedded in the the tradition of Islam. So it's not just when um, the hadith. Uh, being written because it's much further then you s- you start to find oh what is the sanad right anyway for example Sahih Bukhari was written by Muhammad Ibn Ismail Al Bukhari who received each hadith from someone who received it from someone who received it from someone so on until supposedly someone who received it from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself and this is the same as the case Sahih Muslim etc yes meanwhile the gospel okay so uh, uh, so what we say is Someone, someone, someone is not just oh someone, someone, someone. It's actually by name, right? Uh, he had reached from by name, by name, by name, by name, by name, by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it's not just by someone, but of course I understand what he is trying to say. So if the source is trustworthy, if each newspaper says, "I'm writing this because I heard from A, B, C, and he heard from C, D, E." And he observe it directly, uh, or something like that, right? So at least you can, okay, you 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 can verify for yourself whether you want the level of trust on the source, right? So that's how the tradition comes about. So you can actually, uh, and the criteria used by Al Bukhari and Muslim is very high. That um, I think the the famous story about someone who uh, cheat or lie to the animal, right? Meaning. You 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 pretend there's a food, uh, right? And to the cat, and when that is, the the, the he saw that, uh, we cannot take hadith from this guy because he actually, if he can lie. Even from from normal human being, I think you you take that as as something small, but that's the level of, uh, they want to pre- preserve the authenticity authenticity, right? And what is being considered hadith, and uh, sorry, sahih. But it's not etc. Anyway, meanwhile, the Gospel of Matthew was written by Saint Matthew the Apostle. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, I think uh, I have never um, discussed this in detail before with uh, Sylvia Renti, but 
the most common claim that I have seen all but about all the gospel it's is for example gospel according to Matthew because uh, I'm interested to see all of this basically in, in academically I'm interested to see how is this is established because I've heard many times that they say that you cannot prove this uh, who is exactly the Matthew etc etc and uh, I'm not sure whether the those argument that mainly I'm heard I'm hearing from the US because most of the debate among Muslim and Christian there is with Protestant because Sylv- Sylvia Anandi here is a Catholic right so I'm not sure whether um, you know what Protestant because I always seen that the Protestant concede that you know all the gospel is not as stated here known exactly to be written by whom uh, so I'm not sure whether there's a difference between how Catholic and Protestant view each gospel and knowing who actually write it, right? Who has was one of the Jesus twelve apostle, or in the case of Gospel Mark, was it written by Saint John Mark the Evangelist? He received the account from Pope Saint Peter and the twelve. So even logically, you can see how less chance of false. Okay. Uh, when we but for less chance if you talk about because the chain is shorter mm, yeah in theory if you say um uh, generically speaking right the shorter the chain the less error um it doesn't necessarily mean so because if the shorter chain but this is uh, someone known to be um uh, you know cheater and liar while this one, all the ten is known to be very, very truthful person, right? So, in the hadith, that's that's the criteria, right? But I do understand what he's trying to say in the sense that if, generally speaking, most of these are trustworthy person uh, anyway. So, the shorter is even more stronger. I, I can understand that. But uh, uh, what I'm interested in is all of this, right? So, is it exactly from uh, St. John Mark? and who got from this one right so this is the first time i heard this kind of assertion uh so it's it is interesting uh interestingly what you said about the new revelation coming after the last prophet is exactly what groups like the mormons and the seventh day adventist believe they say that the founder of their group were prophets who brought new revelation to correct the corruptions and misunderstanding of the previous ones. Okay, so he draw parallel with uh, Islam where Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes as a prophet and of course there are other group that claim as well. Um, of course, claim is claim, provide the evidence, right? So every single prophet, uh, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes after, that's a previous prophet anyway, but corruption have happened and people need new guidance to correct the corruption right so when moses come obviously people right minded people will demand what's your evidence you you claim to be prophet right what's your evidence do you do you do you command us to simply blindly follow surely not what is the evidence similarly with jesus what's the evidence similarly with muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what's the evidence similarly if anyone want to claim as prophet what's the evidence so that's always being the the benchmark and the 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 flow of the story in the quran um when the evidence is shown right for example the the magician of the pharaoh the pharaoh so they go against uh, musa moses right and when allah says throw your your stuff and it becomes uh, i think snake or something it all their fake magic they know exactly oh this is a sign that this is a truly a prophet this, this is not magic this this is something else this must be from the creator and straight away they become muslim right they, they submit and obey and submit in, in to god and follow the prophet right and then pharaoh actually punish them so all 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 throughout all prophets have to bring forth the evidence because right-minded people will 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 demand for evidence so of course anyone can make claims as as uh what to say if you say y- you do not know what is the truth yet so every, everything is claim right mormon is claiming 
uh, Seventh Day Adventist is claiming, Muslim is claiming, Ju Judaism is claiming, Christianity is claiming. Where is the evidence? So that's normal. It was the only founder that was considered a prophet. Prophetess. While in the case of the Mormon, it is founder successors, meaning that the Mormon believe their current leader can receive new revelation even today. All right, yeah. Uh, even the within Islam, not really Islam, but within the Muslim society, there are also some people that claim to be new prophets, etc. Right. So those are deviant people. Um, even from us Muslim, we see what the Shia is claiming, so we can say, okay, that's already deviant. So yeah, people can make claim. Where is the evidence, right? All right, so that's it for this one. Um, so for if if Sylvia normally Sylvia Arenti is watching my video, so for other comments, uh, I hope um, you can be patient because I have only this this time to do several videos, and after this I have several outstations, and it will take some time before I have the opportunity yet. So, but I I try to do at least one um, from your comment, uh, and inshallah um, coming after inshallah so thank you for watching see you next time